All right, hello and God bless you guys. In the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Um, I'm going to get to this because I want to upload this as quickly as possible. Um, I'm going to start off here, you guys. Um, first, I want to start off saying this. Through my years of witnessing with a lot of people, I can't even begin to say how many people I have talked with over the years, person, in person, one-on-one, -on -one. Uh, not just yelling at them, you know, but really talking face-to-face. -face. And you learn a lot more when you do this. And just like I know a lot of people um, where Scripture says, if our gospel be hid, it's hid to them that are lost. You know, like I have people saying, there's nothing about a rapture or anything like that. You know, uh, somebody asked me, can you say that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, that he came here in the flesh and, you know, and, I'm, and I did, you know, and I do, I have many, many times. And uh, either way, their reply was very cold and not nice, not kind. Anyhow, um, then they're trying to tell me in another comment that, there is nothing saying anything about a rapture. So you see, this is where I'm noticing things where it's hidden. I went back, looked at their channel. They, they've they had their channel since 2009. I didn't start my channel until 2014 under a different phone number, but then I had to do the same name, but underneath another phone number in 2016. Okay. But anyhow, um, when they say there's no such thing as a rapture, you guys, uh, we're going to hopefully get to this towards the end of this video again. But these, for some reason, it's hidden from them. And what I'm talking about here, you guys, the reason why I believe it's hidden, it's because of the things of this world. We're to worship God in spirit, not in carnal ways. And that's what people do. They want to worship him in Christmas, Easter, and all these carnal ways. The Hebrews, they wanted to burn and kill animals and sacrifice and sacrifice and sacrifice, which God said, those things won't save you. And that's why he sent, he came in the flesh and he died on the cross to cover us with his blood. And uh, people today, you know, they want to, you know, like it says, you could be like gods. And that's what people do. They want to set up their ways, their traditions. And the Bible says, my ways are not your ways. They weren't never, never and never, N never. Okay, let me get to reading this. And I'm noticing where a lot of people, they're, they see the times we're in, but they can't see the outs. And a lot of these people, they got their guns. They don't believe there is. And I'm like, you know, they've been around a while, but they, they mention things and they leave these scriptures out. I'm talking even televangelists I've seen on television or YouTube. And they leave out certain scriptures. I'm going, wow, you know, and these are people that have been preaching and teaching the word for 40 years. And I believe what chokes it out are the things of this world. Just read the parable of the seeds, man. And it tells you clearly what we'll do with that. Yeah, you know, the ways of the world. Satan's deceived people in many, many ways. Look at even our school systems, man. They got so many different classes that you could take, but they ain't got no room for the word of God. But they got a lot of other things that you ain't got, you know, you can't just can't take it all. There's so much of it, you know? You're going to take typing, you're going to take home ec, you're going to take this, take that, take this. Oh, we're going to remove the Bible because you got too many things you got to be trying to do here now. And, you know, they literally, um, they've destroyed everything. And everything is ear tickling today. People want to believe they can live and do what they want to do. Let me get with this. All right. I believe, um, come on. I believe many people find it hard to accept about these holidays. Xmas being, you know, it's not being of Christ. It's very simple to see when you know your scriptures. These are man made events. I mean, just go back to the history. Okay, when did that start, you know? And where did that come in and why, you know? This is where man wants to do what they want to do. And look at where it's led us now. And they still keep doing these little traditions because it makes them feel good. Okay, having itchy ears and, you know, Scripture will tell you, man, if you read it. It's very simple to see when you know your Scriptures. These are man-made events, pagan even. 
Um, they the, the things that they do, they used to do in the Roman days and how they uh, grafted it into here and just gave it a different uh, facade. You know what I mean? Made it look Christmassy and put some decorations on it. and But it was actually a lot of very perverted things going on <clears throat> in Rome way back when. All right. It's very simple to see when you know your scriptures. All right. These things were grafted in to people's daily lives several hundred years ago. They are carnal and they are of the world. God warned about these things and people are following them and love them year after year, even as evil is manifesting more and more. And scripture says that they'll wax worse and worse. And look at your, who do you think you're celebrating these with? You're celebrating with the evil that's manifesting in the world. That's a, it's being brought out into daylight. Look at the makeup. You know, women going to go get their makeup. Now you're going to see men in there putting it on too. You know, while well, you still go back there putting your makeup on, your fake eyelashes, you know. You guys, I'm not going to tickle anybody's ear here. I'm not. And Jesus came in the flesh. Now listen to this. Yes. Jesus came in the flesh and is the only begotten son of God. He made a way to escape this place. All right. Many people are still holding on to these false calendar events that are of the world. Are still not able to see. There are those who will only see these things. Coming on the earth as written in Psalms 91. Only with your eyes will you see. See, these are scriptures, they just don't, they can't put it together. And I believe that's because of, of how they're living. The things, the traditions, the things that they're following that are not of God, not of scriptures. Their faith is in, the devil has deceived people at many levels. That's why many say they will suffer in the last days. And they will, because it's coming out of their mouth, and they will, because they are not born again, and they hold fast to what the devil brought to bind them in this world. You know, as scripture says, also God says, because they didn't believe the truth, I'd make them believe the lies so that they might be damned. When people share some of what they think will happen, in the last days, it tells me a lot because they, uh, the scriptures will tell us otherwise, okay? It's like they do not see or they're not able to hold onto these scriptures because they have other things in the world that they are of the world, okay? See, you know, God is spirit. When we ate that forbidden fruit, boom, that made a way for the devil and God. We're both. We're both. There's two of us here now, okay? And we have to overcome the devil. See, to know good and evil. That's what we're here for. Now, the evil, they want you to be very much of this world. They want you to celebrate it. They want you to love it, okay? God says a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Okay, these holidays, these traditions, all these things make separate you from God. To be born again in the spirit, you can't be doing what the world is doing. It's just that, it's that simple. All right, born again of the spirit and celebrating worldly events, it makes no sense at all. And what you will hate, you will hate this life and celebrating these holidays is not doing that either. God's word said you're going to hate this life. You will hate this life. Those that hate it will save it. Those that love it, like it, are going to lose their lives. And many people are not even uh, talking to others about this. They're not. They're not even warning people about the venom they're putting in their bodies. And then people want to come up and ask me silly questions. I've said it over and over and over and over many, many times. I confess Christ as my Lord and Savior. He came here and died. And on the third day, he raised. 
He took my sins, my iniquities to the cross, washed us right now. When we have fellowship with one another, we're washing ourselves with the blood of Christ. You know, and then I, I get these cold answers back from him, you know, very cold. And uh, I'm thinking, who are you? Who are you? You know, I know those people that come at me and they try to get me to follow uh, worldly things and perverted things. I can tell who they are. But when they come at me and ask me to confess Christ, my Lord and Savior, then they just have a really uh, not a good reply. You know, why can't you just say yay or nay? You know, that's what a lot of people are doing. They tell people what they want to hear. You know? And all I did was repeat, and I said, yes, I believe Jesus Christ is my Lord and my Savior. That wasn't good enough. So you guys, there's a lot of confusion out there, man. And when I hear that kind of confusion and those kind of things going on, they're like, they categorize me with a group of people. Why can't none of you just give me a simple yes or no? You know, and I'm like, none of you. It sounds like, you know, anybody, even though they do confess Jesus Christ, like you just said, that's not good enough for you either. You know, they said, um, confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and God. Well, I added, he's my savior too. Jesus Christ, he's, he's also our savior. You know, we can't be saved without him. You know, that's something they left out, you know. So I wanted to add that in there and I did. Many people are not even talking to this about others. Jesus said uh, that you will hate, hate this world. They hated Jesus Christ. The world hated Jesus Christ. Now you see these people, how they're celebrating the world, their worldly events, their worldly calendar things. All right, they're celebrating this. And he said that they would hate you too. That's why I think a lot of these scriptures are hidden. And these people are going to be going through. Some are appointed to the sword. Some are appointed to famine. Some are uh, appointed for uh, where they're going to be going into captivity. These are the things getting ready to come up. And I believe it's got a lot to do with the world. And they would hate you. To when, when you do and say what he did. That the world is evil. See, people aren't used to hearing that, that this world is evil. John 3.19. And this is the condemnation, that light has come into the world, and men love the darkness rather than the light. Because their deeds were evil. You guys, I was shown that the world is infested right now, and it's infested, and you guys know this. Here, where we are, these spirits are even in the churches, and they're in the pulpit, you know? They're in the pulpit. You know, like I said, they're celebrating these holidays with you too, man. They're even in the churches. They're even in the pulpits now, you know? And I'm over here trying to warn people, speaking like I'm speaking, and I got silly you know, are, are, you, are you really real? Are you, are you, you know, man, I'm coming against the, the devil in so many, many ways, you know, bringing it all out. Jesus Christ said, everything will come to the surface and you'll see it. You know, and I got people coming over to me like that. First John 3, 8. He that committeth sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whoever is born of God does not commit sin. You know, now, would the devil be trying to come at you and tell you to stop sinning? No, the devil wants you to sin. That's one of their big ear-tickling messages today. Even if you sin, this is the gospel made simple. No, it says to make known the mystery of the gospel. So when I hear these people say, ABC, that's the gospel made simple. I know who they are. Whoever is born of God does not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin because he's born of God. 1 John 5, 3. 
For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments, they're not grievous. For whatsoever is born of God, it overcomes the world. That means these holidays, all this stuff, it's going to be nonsense. People standing before the throne of God are not going to say, uh, is, is it time to celebrate Christmas? Is it Easter? Is it what? Uh, well, we got these traditions here. We want to keep celebrating them. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. So what do you got to hold on to these traditions for? You know? Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. Oh, you got a lot of people out there. I've had a lot of people out there tell me, oh, they believe Jesus Christ came here in the flesh, but they're stumbling around in darkness. You know, they're doing all these worldly things. What does it say? He overcomes the world that believes. For whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Are you telling me you overcame the world and you're celebrating these worldly things? Who is he that overcometh the world but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God? Overcomes the world. This means the things that are of this world. It does such a, uh, in their, their traditions. 1 John 5.18 We know that whatever is born of God, it sinneth not. But he that you know, because you're overcoming the world. You're going to be dead to it. You're going to hate this place. It's begotten of God. He keeps himself. And that wicked one touches him not. <clears throat> and we know that we are of God. And the whole world lies in wickedness. First John 5.19. The whole world, man. Go look back how long your little holidays have been going on, man. And how the evil in this world has been manifesting when you boast on yourselves and your traditions. and Oh, it's disgusting. We know that we are of God and the whole world lies in wickedness. John chapter 1, 9. That was the true light which lie, lieth every man that cometh into the world. He was not in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. So what, do you, what in the world you got to do with this world? Satan's here. Satan's got power to deceive you with these things. That's why he said, he, you're going to love Satan, boy. You're going to really love him. And Jesus even said that. You'll end up loving one, and you'll hate the other. You'll despise the other. Well, you make up your little ways saying you are. But the truth is, it's you and your world and what you want to do in this. I can't tell you how many supposedly Christians, oh, I hope he ain't coming back yet. There's so many things I got to do. First John one ten, He was in the world, the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. John 8.12 Then spoke Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of this world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of the life. Now, where does he tell you to do all these traditions? He said, follow his teachings and stuff. We've gotten off course of that. That's why you see what you see in the world today. That's why you see what you see in the schools today. Because people wanted to be led uh, to err. They think they're doing it better than the Pharisees, and they're not. I'm seeing many types of darkness in people who walk in darkness, and they say they believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, even while they're doing what they're doing. You know, they're not even making a peep about any of this. And they pack their kids off to school still. John nine thirty nine, and Jesus said, For judgment I came into this world, that they which see not might see. See, we were all blind. We were. And they that would see might be made blind. In other words, those that are appointed wanting to be rulers and they're, acting, they're leading other people to follow their ways, their traditions. 
John 9, 40 and 41. And some, of, and some of the Pharisees, which were with him, they heard these words and they said to him, are we blind also? And Jesus said unto them, if you were blind, you should have no sin. But now you say, we see, therefore your sin remains. How sick do you have, how sick does it have to get before you get sick of it? See, therefore your sin remains. Because if you could sit there and keep celebrating these holidays as sick and wicked and perverted as this world is, oh, and you're celebrating it with the wicked. You say you see, therefore your sin remains. Then you say many are going to say, Lord, Lord, didn't I do this? Didn't I do that? And he's going to say, depart from me. I never knew you. You workers of iniquity. But now you say, we see. Therefore, your sin remains. I want to ask you, do you take every word serious that's spoken by the Lord? Every word that he spoke? Because I sure don't hear a lot of it being preached or talked about. All his teachings? Or do you just select the teachings and then say, this is the whole gospel made simple? John fifteen twenty two. If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not sin, but now they have no cloak for their sins. None whatsoever. You're bathing in it. When you're celebrating all these worldly holidays and traditions, you are bathing yourselves in sin. And you don't even know it. And you feel good about it. Because you love this present life. That the word of God says this present evil world. That's what you came here for. So Satan could have his ways and see who you would hold to and who you would follow. And you're following the ways of this world. That's why you see what it is today. It's so wicked and evil. Numbers 32, 23. But if you will not do so, behold, you have sinned against the Lord and be sure your sin will find you out. You've sinned against the Lord, and your sin will find you out. Genesis 4, 7. If thou does well, shall thou not be accepted? And if thou does not well, then sin lies at your door. And unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. In other words, the devil's going to rule over you. You're going to start following their ways, their traditions, and all that, what they're doing? I've been into many of these churches, man, around here. I've seen what they're doing, boy. It's, uh, uh, it, I, I, it repels me. I can't even do it. I can't. Can't sit in there and watch them be saluting flags, doing their little worldly traditions and getting, uh, I, can't, I can't be around it. Well, wickedness, and they're celebrating it with the wicked. And they don't even consider that. This is the reason why I'm saying I see people that can't see the, some of the scriptures hidden from them. And the Bible tells you it's because it's hidden to those who are lost. Genesis 4, um, let me see. Psalms 98 and 9. Thou hast set our iniquities before thee, our secret sins in the light of thy countenance. For all our days are passed away in thy wrath. We spend our years as the tale that is told. Yeah, that's what they do. It's, it's all our time, our spent years here. What do you think they teach in history in school? Nothing about God. Nothing, not God's history. No, they're too busy with man's history. And you guys don't even consider it. I'm not saying everybody out there. It's those that might stumble on this channel and want to stumble on because they don't want to hear it. They don't want to hear the truth today. Many people don't. They're looking for somebody to make them feel good in their sin instead of coming out of it. You know, these are the things we got to say, oh man, Lord, forgive me. You know, I ain't saying not. We didn't. We all did. You know, but you can come out of it. You can repent from it and you can stop. And trust in the Lord with your whole heart. 
uh, Proverbs 13, 20, and 21. He that walketh with the wise men will be wise, but a companion of fools will be destroyed. Evil pursueth sinners, but to the righteous good shall be repaid. You know, Isaiah 3.11, Woe unto the wicked, it will be ill with him, for the reward of his hands shall be given him. 3.12, Isaiah, As for my people, children are their oppressors, women rule over them. My people, they which lead you to err, and they destroy the ways of thy path. That's what I'm saying. They they don't even know their path. They only know their path. They know is what they've been. Their parents have told them. They don't even look at the word, the history of God. You know, no, they're gonna look at their history. Yeah, you guys got your own little history book going. Isaiah fifty nine one and two. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save. Neither is ear heavy that he cannot hear. But your iniquities. They've separated you between God and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. That's the reason why a lot of things are hidden. That's the reason why a lot of people say, there ain't no rapture, there ain't nothing saying it in there. For your hands are defiled with blood, your fingers with iniquity, your lips have spoken lies, your tongues have muttered perverseness. None call for justice. That's all this perversion. You're celebrating with these people. None call for justice, nor any pleadeth for the truth. They, they trust in vanity. In other words, yourselves and your traditions. And they speak lies. They conceive mischief. They bring forth iniquity. They do not heed warnings anymore today, you guys, than they did in the scriptures, Okay. They don't listen to the prophets then. They don't listen to them now. Okay. All right. I'm going to load this up in a video. And uh, I will pick up with the rest of this um, on a live video. Okay. Because there's quite a bit still left to do. And I'll do it when I go down there loading this up. I hope and pray you guys you get something out of this. Let me see if I can do this real quick. You know, this is where I say I hear different things from people's mouths where they deny the rapture. And then if you go into Revelation 6, um, when you open the sixth seal, when they go to hide. See, we're going to be here when all the horses have ridden out, okay? The white, red, black, and the pale. Death and hell follow. A pale horse. Right now, you guys, we're seeing where the food's rising, okay? Things are going to get real bad here pretty soon. Okay, where food's going to get where nobody can afford it, especially those that are on... Uh, uh, assistance, okay? They get free food every month. Um, and when he had opened the four seal, death, uh, I heard a voice say, come and see. And I looked and beheld a pale horse, and on his name sat death, and hell followed. And there was power to give over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword, with hunger, and with death. That's why I'm saying some people are appointed to sword, some are to famine, and some are... Uh, to captivity. That's what it says here. He doesn't change. Okay, it's in Revelation 6, 9, or 8, verse 8. 6, verse 8, then you get to verse 9. And when you open the fifth, the souls of them, uh, remember, many people are going to be killed. They're going to be separated. This is a further tear is being separated. That's what this is. It's like being in a refinery. Imagine yourself being in a refinery and you're being refined because that's what this is, okay? And it's also the terrorists being gathered first. This is where you get down to the nitty-gritty, okay, where you really separate it. This is the last of the terrors. 
And they cried with a loud voice saying, Oh Lord, how long? And then this is where the Lord tells me, he gives them robes and he says, rest a little while uh, for a little season until your fellow servants and brethren that should be killed as you were killed. These are the ones that go into captivity, you guys. And when you open the sixth seal, that's when they're going to, see, they're going to be busy killing people. Very brutal. And then there's going to be that big earthquake where the whole thing shakes and they're going to go hide in the rocks, in the dens, okay? Then you go into Thessalonians here, and it says, uh, verse 13 to 18, I would not have you to be ignorant, brothers, concerning them which are asleep, that you saw not, even as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and he rose again, even so, them which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you, by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain, un you hear that? We which are alive and remain. In other words, there's going to be a whole lot of stuff going on, you guys. This is where you want to be hidden in your chambers, okay? Um, those which are alive and remain under the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord shall descend himself with the shout, the voice of an archangel, with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we which are alive and remain. In other words, if you are fortunate enough and God lets you see these things, a lot of these things are hidden from people. They can't put it together because maybe there are jingle bells, jingle bells all the way. You know, the traditions of men that they keep bound because they really love it, you know. See, these things are meant to keep you carnal, to keep you carnally minded, enjoying the world. Oh, and you're enjoying them with the wicked. The people that pass these wicked, evil laws, boy, they're celebrating this stuff with you. See, they've always been having these little celebrations, but it wasn't called Christmas. It used to be those that hung a reef on their door. Oh, it meant you knew who was in that door. You know, and now they just attach things to it to mock God. And people are playing along with it, you know. We which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort yourselves with these words. Now, did you hear that? We which believe that Jesus Christ came here in the flesh, okay, in no way am I denying it. That's why I say for somebody to ask me that question, I'm like, what? I'm over here. But yet they can't. I went and I list, looked at their, what they made a comment. They didn't believe in the rapture. It's hidden from them. I told you, I've met Christians, pastors and churches, man. They think they're going to be raptured and they won't see nothing. Okay. Well, it's going to be a surprise when they see what's coming. <clears throat> Scripture clearly tells you. All those horses, death and hell. Then that's where First Thessalonians, yeah, you got to go back in First Thessalonians because that's the teachings that we have to get and understand. But not everybody can get it. God bless you guys. I love you. In the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. And put some decent comments down and I would love to respond to them.